Hello, everybody. Just uh, getting a bit of an early start here. Uh, it is about uh, four minutes until kickoff. Hope everybody is doing well in whatever part of the world you're tuning in from. So uh, my name is Jason Burns. I am tasked with uh, bringing you a little tutorial today on how we letter uh, Neymar Junior Comics. So I will be getting started here in just a few minutes. I put up uh, peak me time at reading comics so that uh, it all circles back. Just uh, to give everybody a heads up, I'm going to be working on Adobe Illustrator. Obviously, I know not everybody has that software. It's what we work on here, uh, the Adobe brand of softwares. Uh, so that's what I'll be using to, to show everybody. What's... Uh, What's fun about this one is the page I'll be doing, which is right here, uh, is from an upcoming book called Inked a Steady Hand. And I thought it was a good one to uh, share with everybody. Not only is it sort of the, the issues where everything kind of culminates in what we've been building up towards, but it also sort of sets the stage of what you'll see when uh, all of the allies Junior has made over the course of the series come together to to fight the good fight. All right, we're just getting started. Uh, usually, I have a little checklist of things I need to do before I get into lettering a comic. Uh, number one is I wear glasses, so I advise anybody who does wear glasses to put them on when you're lettering because it does a real number on your eyes. I'll be zooming in quite a bit, as you'll see, with reckless abandon so that I don't uh, burn out my eyes any more than they already are. Um, number two, I usually have a fresh cup of coffee, which I also have. Uh, and number three, I usually have music on in the background, but I will spare you that today. All right. So, again, as I was saying, we usually letter in Adobe, Adobe Illustrator. Um, I did not start out as a letterer. I am not a letterer. Uh, it was really by uh, necessity that I started lettering the books. Uh, we do each issue that we have in six languages. So each book gets lettered six times. Um, if a series has over 100 pages, you know, we're lettering 600 pages for each series. Uh, so it just required us to kind of spread our resources over. So I'm really self-taught. By no means do I say that this is the way that it should be done. Uh, basically, do it. It took me, you know, a good amount of time to figure out the best approach for me. I had some help from one of our other uh, letterers, Nick Shames, who sort of brought me up to speed on some of it. And then the rest of it, I just kind of, kind of figured it out along the way what worked best for me. Uh, so, number one is uh, what you're going to want to do is uh, get your page set up. So, it, here it is in here. I'll get rid of this so you don't have to see me uh, at page 10. But uh, what you're going to want to do is zoom in on your page uh, and then, so I bring the page in and I letter it as part. Because to me, that's uh, the basis for everything we're going to be working on. And I lock that up. Um, <clears throat> from there, I start making the other layers that I know I'm going to be able to, know I'm going to be using. So in this case, 
we have uh, bubbles, which uh, basically are the talk bubbles. We have a caption on this page, as you'll see in a bit. So I do a layer for that as well. And then we always, the first uh, version of the comic that we always letter is the English version because that's how it's written. So then we start off with English uh, layer as well. Uh, again, that is because uh, everything is written in English. We letter it in English and then it goes out to all the translators to be translated in the various languages that we have. Uh, so for me, uh, because I'm also the writer on most of the books, um, I have access to all the scripts from the get-go. Uh, they may change a little bit in the process as I'm lettering, uh, and as the art comes in. But the first step I always do is I go in and I just copy and paste all the, uh, all the dialogue and or captions into the English layer first. That's where I start. So I copied and pasted this first caption, which is the next day. And the first thing I need to do is I need to change it to our font. And we have a very specific font that we use, which is called FTF, which is Fan the Flame, uh, which is the parent company, uh, Dialogue Light, which is all the dialogue, and then the bold, which is the captions. And sometimes if you want to have something being said with emphasis, we use that as well. The reason we created our own font is because we do all the books in different languages. There's so many different accents and special characters in all the different languages that we need to cover our bases. But uh, if anybody is learning to, to letter their own book, um, you can find lots of comic fonts out there uh, on the internet uh, to, to get crazy with. So I do that. Uh, then we change it to our size, which here is uh, we use seven. And then I center that. And then I kind of put it in position where I think it's going to go at the uh, stage when I put in the caption boxes or the bubble. Uh, so then we're going to put in the first dialogue. So I basically copy it from the script, and then I control V it, uh, paste it into my uh, document here over the art. And just to so you guys know, uh, keep the art on the bottom layer, uh, and then the art will always remain underneath everything that you're dropping in. Uh, so again, I changed everything to where I need to be, and you center it because when you get to the dialogue, that's when when you start moving it into a vertical position, it'll stay underneath each other. So um, this first line, it says, well, what do you think? We know that's coming on as sort of an exterior shot. So the bubble will be coming from a window or uh, the door to show that it's coming from the inside. So I'll just drop it there for now, and I'll come back to it after I get everything in. Um, I tried to keep work a page here that had very limited dialogue so we could just get through the process as painlessly as possible for you guys. Um, and then you just kind of go through and you just kind of copy and paste everything. Again, a lot of the work is done because the script is already done. You're not having to, to physically type anything. Um, things kind of change the process a little differently when you're doing it later. Um, from the perspective of uh, the different languages, because even though the bubbles and the caption boxes are already there, um, when you translate things, it's uh, a lot of times it's transcreation. A lot of the stuff that I'm writing in English doesn't always necessarily completely translate over into Italian or French or Portuguese. So um, the the box the boxes can change in size, either get smaller or larger. So um, at that point, you're doing a lot of uh, different types of things to make it all fit in, but um, this is where the basis sort of begins. Um, so we're almost in. This is the last uh, dialogue that we're getting put in there. Um, again, this is one that's going to be coming from off, so I'll just put it over here for now. We don't want to, actually we'll throw it up top here. We don't want to cover anybody up because that's a great image. This is a page done by uh, Fernando Paniche, Pharaoh. Um, who does a lot of our uh, main title uh, inked books. And he's just amazing at everything, and he has everything really down in terms of uh, the characters and the world, and it's just, they're just always so great to see. So, all right, so now that I have the English in there, I'm going to lock up that uh, section for now, and I'm going to go to bubbles. This is the area where it took me the longest to sort of figure it out. Um, it, so you're going to... You're going to select uh, the ellipsis tool, or you can just hit L on your keyboard, which will bring it up, a little shortcut. And you hold the left uh, button of your mouse, 
you bring it out and then you let go of the left trigger of your mouse and the ellipsis pops up. Uh, right now you have a black box. Um, you're going to want to bring that to a white box with a dark out, uh, black outline and you just hit D and it automatically does that for you. Um, lots of characters in our books will have different color boxes or different color, color bubbles and it changes everything up a bit, but we just wanted to keep this real simple here for you uh, on this one. So we have the bubble. That's the easy part. It's the tail that gets real confusing um, for me, and it was the area that took me the longest time to figure out. Um, so you click on uh, the pen tool, or again, the P uh, button for the shortcuts. And you pick the place where you kind of want that tail of the bubble to come out. You click and you hold. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me see here. Uh, you click. You don't hold that time. Then you uh, just do a quick click. You bring it out to where you want it to go, and then you click and hold. And when you click and hold, you can move it uh, all around in different positions, and that sort of gives you the swooshing tail look of the bubble. So let's say we wanted to keep it there. Um, you don't let go. You hold Alt, and then you go back to the point. And then when you let go, it makes that uh, a sort of another anchor. And then you click and hold where you want the tail to end. And then you do the same thing. You kind of stretch the bubble around, uh, stretch the uh, pen around to get to the sort of the swoosh that you want, release it. And then uh, the two are there. They're not connected. They exist as different items. So you hit shift. Uh, you can if you click off of it. So if you click off, you click on it, hold shift click the bubble, and then you come down here uh, in your Pathfinder and you merge the two. And then you have a completed um, uh, dialogue bubble there. Um, so that's the process. You just kind of go through the whole book, um, kind of picking and choosing where you want to put the dialogue, because a lot of our books end up in a process called Digitunes, um, which is a vertical reading scroll. Um, you kind of get a sense of how they're going to be cut up for uh, say cell phones or tablets. So, for instance, in this case, I left the dialogue in the center, knowing that um, a lot of the stuff on the outside is probably going to be cut down, at least for the digital version. In the print version, that might be different. Um, you'll probably see the print version will just look a lot like you see here on the page, which is okay um, that the dialogue is still here. It's just a lot of times it's a fun choice. You're going to see what fits, what doesn't fit. Sometimes the panel will have a lot more dialogue than what you see here and so on and so forth. And so here I would have taken more time. I think that the tail is a little thick there. I would have gone in and changed it a little bit. But for the sake of uh, moving things along, I just wanted to pop those in there for you. Um, and then you got, uh, I'm going to lock that one. I'm going to open the caption layer so we can put a caption here. Um, if you were creating the caption, you could do the same thing as the uh, ellipsis. Uh, you could just hit the rectangle, which is the M key. Um, but uh, what I do is I kind of keep these files of everything that we have saved. So there are shortcuts because we're lettering so many books that I can just copy and paste these in and then fit them to what it is, drop it in, lock it, and then uh, we're on our way to have it. Oh, we'll do this last one here so you can see that as well. So this one will be coming off panel because Junior is saying it from uh, what is basically off camera. If this was a TV show or a movie. Um, so, and then there you go. There's a completed page that's lettered. Now, usually most books have, each issue has about 20 pages. So we'll go through this um, for 20 pages, save them all out, put them into a PDF, send them out to the translators, and then do it all over again in each language. Um, so we save them out, uh, you keep the layers, you lock everything up when you're done. If a lot of times I won't be the one that does the other languages, um, we'll have multiple letters working on a book at any single time. Uh, and a lot of times things will change before we go to press, uh, dialogue will change, uh, story points will change. And so you're always constantly trying to update as you go. So. Um, that's why we try to keep everything in a layer. If somebody else was coming in, so let's say they were going to letter the Portuguese version, we would create a, create a new layer, 
uh, some Portuguese, and then we would just make the English layer go uh, invisible, uh, hide that layer, and then if we put in the Portuguese text, and let's say that it was um, a little larger or smaller, you can then adjust the bubbles accordingly, or if you need to, you can delete them and uh, make fresh ones to, to fit the panel. Um, so that's about it. I mean, this is something that uh, it's sort of uh, the busy work of what we do. It's not always the creative fun stuff, but you can make it creative. Like I was saying, there's a lot of uh, characters that we have that speak in different ways, where there's like a bubble that looks a certain way and so on and so forth. So that's uh, something that we always try to uh, try to do is bring a little creative flair into things, especially on the uh, EFX side. If you see a, a sound effect uh, in the comic, um, a lot of times uh, they'll be done digitally. Uh, Nick Shane's will do that, or hand drawn. Dustin Evans will do that, and it really sort of helps bring the the books together so that there's a specific look um, amongst each book. So that's uh, that's about it on my side of things in terms of how we go about lettering a comic book page. If anybody has any questions, I'll jump in and answer them. But um, again, for us, uh, we use Adobe Illustrator. If that's not something that you have, there are other uh, softwares that you can use to letter in. And you know, you can even, if you have your own comic and you're putting it together, you can letter it uh, hand-drawn, which is how they used to make comics and why a lot of our, I'll click it back on, which is why um, Dialogue has that sort of hand-drawn look to it. Um, so uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us here today on our lettering tutorial. Uh, if you have any other questions, you can always uh, leave them in the comment uh, section, and I will pop back in and, and happily answer them. Thank you all for uh, tuning in, and uh, have a great Friday.